We all know that steroids, things like prednisone and prednisolone, can be life-saving in certain conditions, particularly in diseases that are associated with a lot of autoimmunity. And sometimes when we're in the hospital and we're under tremendous stress, this, these are things that can be life-saving. But according to the Institute of Medicine, steroids can cause osteoporosis in just about three months, maybe three to six months. And about 5% of women take steroids. Hard to believe the number is that big. That means one person in 20 in the US that's a woman is taking steroids. And they take them for things like rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, irritable uh, inflammatory bowel disease, vasculitis of all different kinds, and many different kinds of skin problems. And we know that the kinds of fractures that we get most often are ones that are compression fractures in the spine. And what that means is with just a little bit of trauma, we can have compression of the vertebrae in the spine that can cause tremendous uh, pain that can last for sometimes months to years. Uh, and it can also cause a lot of other problems besides the pain because of immobilization, uh, clots that can form in veins uh, that can cause uh, thrombophlebitis and pulmonary emboli and even increase the risk of death. We know that even people who are using inhalers have a dose-related response that can cause osteoporosis. For some reason, those people that are injected into joints seem not to have the problem, but maybe it perhaps hasn't been studied well enough to be sure about that. The treatment of, of uh, steroid-induced osteoporosis, of course, is prevention. Uh, that's the best thing to do. So weight-bearing exercise is a very important thing to do if you're on a steroid. Uh, taking in adequate calcium, but not too much, because we know that as we, as we take in too much calcium, it tends to speed up the development of arteriosclerosis. We need enough protein. We need vitamin D in adequate amounts, and preferably from sunlight. Uh, we should avoid smoking and avoid alcohol, because those are risk factors for it. And what a lot of people forget is that you can't heal or, or heal tissues without vitamin K2. So it's important to take a certain amount of vitamin K2. And generally what I recommend for my patients is somewhere around 15 milligrams a day in that setting. And, and the other thing that's often not recommended is strontium, which is something that stimulates the laying down of new bone by the osteoblast cell that's in bone. And of course, we should be doing DEXA scans to, to trace, to see if we can measure anything that shows some kind of osteoporosis. And then there are urine tests that can be done, one called the osteomark test, that can show if bone breakdown products are turning over at a faster rate. And this can give us a clue very early in the development of, of osteoporosis caused by steroids that gives, uh, get, can tell us we better do something uh, to, to, ratify, to, to fix the situation. Other causes for osteoporosis should also be looked for, particularly in the setting when we're on steroids. Things like uh, using uh, an acid diet rather than an alkaline one. Things like the phosphates that are in sodas uh, will tend to make calcium excretion worse. Uh, any inflammatory process will tend to increase the risk of bone breakdown. So we should try and incur, uh, to solve any inflammatory processes going on in the body if we can. Hormonal deficiencies, particularly testosterone and estrogen, and maybe perhaps progesterone as well, lead to this problem. Then there are a bunch of drugs like dilantin and heparin. Coumadin is one that's really common uh, that uh, causes osteoporosis. The proton pump inhibitors, things like Asifex and Prilosec and those drugs you see in the direct-to-consumer ads. In just a couple of years, the risk for osteoporosis goes up substantially. And then people that are on SSRI antidepressants like Prozac, very common cause of that. And while there's some debate about it, there's a clear association that's worrisome. Some of the diabetes drugs like Avandia, which already has a really bad reputation because it increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes, and Actos uh, are also concerns. If we're on too much thyroid hormone, that causes the turnover of bone cells too fast and leads to osteoporosis, as do diuretics. So they're... The best thing, of course, is to try and not get sick in the first place and do what you can to live a healthy lifestyle because that's your best way to prevent any disease. But if you're on steroids and you can't do anything about it, then you should be looking at some of the tips that I've given you that might be able to be of some use in lessening your risk for developing osteoporosis. And remember, the Institute of Medicine says this develops within three to six months in most people who are on steroids.